Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And my friends, it's good to see you, and welcome to those of you who are watching us from home in your pajamas, I'm presuming. Welcome to this place. Um, we're here to give thanks and praise to our God, to worship Him. Why? Because God has called us out of the darkness of our loneliness, our sinfulness, into His own wonderful life. He's offered us the free gift of salvation, and it is through the gift of God's own mercy that he does this, the triumph of mercy over justice. So let us take a moment now to rest in that compassion, in that mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me and the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. <laughs> Sing it in your hearts. If you want to dance, as long as you can have the, the you know, the, the social distancing, you're welcome. Do cartwheels and spin around. Carol, want to do your dancing? No? Okay. Can't hear me? Okay. No dancing, Carol. <laughs> Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb. Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father.
through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light. Grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your risen Son and our brother, who lives and reigns with you, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, holy and mighty God, forever and ever. Amen. See you Second Book of Kings. One day, Elisha was passing through Shunem, where a wealthy woman lived, who urged him to have a meal. So, whenever he passed that way, he would stop there for a meal. She said to her husband, Look, I am sure this man who regularly passes our way is a holy man of God. Let us make a small roof chamber with walls and put there for him a bed, a table, a chair, and a lamp so that he can stay there whenever he comes to us. One day, when Elisha came there, he went up to the chamber and lay down there. He said to his servant, Gehazi, What then may be done for this woman? Gehazi answered, well, she has no son, and her husband is old. Elisha said, Call her. When the servant had called her, she stood at the door. Elisha said, At this season, in due time, you shall embrace a son. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he 
died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. think of the gospel? Do you want me to talk about it or do you want me to talk about something else? <laughs> it's harsh, isn't it? Isn't it? It's harsh, isn't it? If you think this is harsh, though, if you think this is harsh sounding, it was 10,000 times harsher sounding to people of Jesus' time. It's really important to understand the context. Because insofar as all human beings are mostly the same, you know, really, truly, you know, it's a real error on our part to think of past generations as country bumpkins with no wisdom. Honestly, 2,000 years ago, they were wise people. But their culture was different in that for them, family, clan was everything. They made the Irish look like little Bo Peep in terms of clannishness because this is how society worked in those days. And it's the only way it survived. There was the father, the patriarch, who was in charge of everything, who owned everything. The land, the house, the compound that they all lived in, he owned everything. With him lived his wife, his sons, and his daughters. And when his sons got married, their family, their, his, his daughters-in-law would come and live with them, all of them, and the grandchildren. Everybody lived together. Family was everything. And so, do you see, actually, now think of some stories that you know of, like the prodigal son. So, when we look at the story of the prodigal son, we think he's just selfish. They would have heard the story and thought, he's not just selfish, he's stupid. He's stupid. He's separating himself from life itself. I mean, their existence, their ability to survive, depended on the family, the family's honor, the education that they received, even the land that they got their food from belonged to family. So the man who told his father, I want to go out on my own, 
was, would have been considered an idiot by people of that time. It's a little bit different for us, right? Our culture, we, insofar as we love our children, yeah, of course we do, but we encourage them. That's part of the thing that our culture does. We encourage them to leave the nest, you know? You're 37 years old, it's time for you to leave the basement, you know? Like we, 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 we encourage them to go out and make a life for themselves. But that was not the way in those days. So what Jesus is saying really had a profound impact. He's saying, if you do not choose me over your parents, or your brothers and sisters, or your children, and that's the key. He's not saying, if you don't choose to follow this philosophy, if you don't choose to follow this, this code of ethics, he's saying, if you don't choose to follow me, me, to be in relationship with me, He's saying that has to be first and foremost. So how are we supposed to relate to that in our culture? You know? Because again, as I say, we are, as much as we, we, are, we do have family, we do love family, but we do indeed encourage independence of our children. We do send them out. You know? So how are we to relate to this? Well, okay, so if family was everything for them, what is everything for us? Well, think about it for a minute. What kind of a culture are we? You know, I gotta tell you that COVID, the pause that we received in COVID does have some silver linings, and one of them is it's given us an opportunity to look at ourselves and to examine our behavior, things that we've taken for granted. What kind of a people are we as a culture? I'm not judging, just saying, what kind of a people? Eh? Spoiled. Spoiled! Oh my goodness! Come on up here, you're gonna finish the homily for me. <laughs> We're, we are entitled. And by what? By virtue of whatever it is that we earn, you know, our earning power. We are consumers. We are consumers. And what COVID has taught us is, I will never buy a loaf of bread again, I don't think. I don't have to. I figured out how to make bread. You wouldn't like my bread. I make it with red lentils. But I like it. I figured out how to not stand in line at Sobeys for 25 minutes. In that space of time, I can make like five or six different flatbreads, you know, and I'm set for a couple of days. We've learned to simplify our lives, haven't we? Haven't we? All of us. I don't think there's one of us that hasn't figured out how to simplify our lives. And big surprise! We can survive without the things we thought we couldn't live without. You do not have to have the latest deodorant or toothpaste the, the latest version that's come out, you know, so where you throw away the old tube because this one's better. No. Your old men and speed stick is just fine. Thank you. You know what I mean? Like, we've learned that we can live more simply. Now, I've got to warn you, as, and I think I don't need to warn you, you smart people, you know, that when this whole thing gets going again, it's going to take some time. Please don't make the mistake of thinking this is over. I had somebody say to me, this is over. Thank goodness the church is opening up again. I got to tell you, uh, last night, and again this morning at the 9 o'clock, and I'm sure it will happen again, a white van drives by, counts all the cars in the parking lot, stops, looks inside to see if we're doing the right thing. Already one church in Winnipeg Archdiocese has been nailed, $3,000 for the parish, and a fine for every single person that was in the building. So, no, this is serious. And it's not government putting people down, this is about love your neighbor. That's really what this is. I would, I would accuse anybody, by the way, who says, well, the government hasn't got any rights to sort of curtail my rights. I'd say, you are sinning right now. Love your neighbor. You may not care about your own life, but please care about the others. You know? So, anyway, that being said, we've learned that we don't, have to, we don't have to follow the consumer machine. I don't think we really realize that. I, I didn't realize how hooked I was. Do you realize how easy it is to be a consumer in our culture? It is so easy. Not only do I, can I go to Sobeys, not only can I go to, uh, uh, before, I could easily go to any department store, any store, but I can also get all kinds of stuff online. One o'clock in the morning if I can't sleep. Amazon Prime, beautiful, it'll be here in two days. You know? It's so easy. But now I'm looking and I'm thinking, I don't need much. I don't need much. There is a very, very big machine out there that's not going to be very happy with that kind of thinking. Trust me. And as soon as things start opening up again, it's going to start to try to get us involved again. But think of what that does. What does it do to you? 
the anxiety it creates that you don't, you know, I think I could have a better car. You know? This one, this one's great, it works fine, but I don't know. It needs more bells and whistles. It's not the right color. Ah, whatever. I'm being silly. But you know what I mean? We can be that frivolous. We can be absolutely that frivolous about stuff. So if the people of Jesus' time were preoccupied with honor and family, we are preoccupied with wealth and pleasure and power. That's really our thing. And Jesus is saying to the people then, if you don't love me more than you, than you cherish the honor that you're seeking, and for us, if you don't love me and follow me more than the wealth and pleasure and power that you can achieve on your own, then you're holding on to something that will give you no life. You'll be very shocked to find out it gives you no life. It's you cannot save yourself, is really what the message is. Jesus is not asking you to hate your parents, and he's not asking you to hate your children. He's asking you to choose rightly. Now, remember, when you follow Jesus as a disciple, what is it that we're learning? We're learning the two great commandments, and we're learning how to live them all the time. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and love your neighbor. And how do you, how do you love? Uh, you must be getting sick of me saying it over and over again. I keep quoting St. Thomas Aquinas. Love is willing the good of the other for the sake of... Say it. The other. the other, of course. Exactly. You will the good of the other, but not for anything you can get out of it. You will the good of the other for their own sake. That's why the litmus test was always loving your enemy, because you can't expect your enemy to, to, to return the favor. Likely that they won't return the favor. That was always the test. And so what Jesus is saying is, you've got to love me first. Choose me first. And guess what? You know what happens at that point? Then you will properly love your mother and your father. And properly love your children. Not for anything you can get out of it. But for themselves. And for their own good. What they can get. You will ask God to give them what they need because you're good with God. So you see, he's not asking anything unreasonable. You and I are in the middle of ordinal time right now. We started just last week, getting back into ordinal time. We tend to think of the most important times in the church year as those festivals, Christmas and Easter. They are not. The most time we spend is in ordinal time. And it's not ordinary by any stretch of the imagination. It is the time when we work on our discipleship. Those other things, they're parties. Christmas, it's a party. Easter, it's a party. Great parties, important parties. But this is when we get the work done. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say to you this. You and only you know. I don't know. I know my list. But I'm asking you, what's on your list? You look at yourself. And what are the things on your list that you say to God, yeah, I love you, but there's this thing on my list that I just don't want to... It's important to me, Lord. I think you understand, don't you? That this is as important to me as you are. Or, more, or maybe more important. Will you ever admit that? No, not really. But that's what this season is all about. You've got, you're being asked to become better disciples of Jesus. That's the thing. And if you're going to do that, the good disciple loves God with all his heart, all her soul, all her strength, and loves his or her neighbor as oneself. That's what a good disciple does. It's a practice. Will you ever get perfect at it? Uh-uh. Sorry. I've tried. Trust me. I can't do it. Not yet. With God's help, though, just about anything is possible. And that is actually another thing I want to remind you of. One of the most painful things that we've had is the, the fact that we've been deprived of the sacraments. So, for some of us, it's something that we're able to share now again. Oh, if you've had the opportunity, it's been a blessing in a sense because you've learned what you're hungry for. Right? Have you been hungry for the Eucharist? Have you? Yeah. Good. That's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. Sometimes we have to get hungry to know that we've had too much. You know? And to figure out what we're hungry for. Well, hungry for the Eucharist, not a bad thing. Why? Because we recognize that in our simplicity, in our poverty as human beings, that what we need is God's grace and God's help. It's not so bad being human, as long as we remember that we're human. You know, as long as we remember that our purpose in life is to know God, to love God, to serve God, and to spend eternity with God. God is God. I'm not. If I forget that, I'm in trouble. And believe me, our culture is set up to make it so that it's easy to forget that. Our culture is set up to make, it, make us believe that whoever's got the most toys at the end is the one who wins. That ain't true, my friends. It ain't true. 
It is not true. The one who wins is the one who's managed to let go of as much as possible. So, there's the invitation. We're at the beginning of ordinal time. We've got a little bit of work to do. I know I do. I bet you do too. Only you know your list. Pick something on the list. Start working at it. Chip away. Chip away. Chip away at it. Are you all thinking about your list? Yeah, think about it. What is it that you're holding on to? Where do you, where do you hedge your bets where, where God is concerned? Where do you secretly say, yeah, everything but this. This, no, I don't let go of. Well, it might not even be a thing. It might be an attitude. It might be a perspective. You know, who knows? It's your list. I got mine. I won't tell you what's on my list. It's too embarrassing. Because I know you all think I'm perfect. I, I know you all think I'm perfect. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know? So, yeah, think about it. Work on it. We, we've got weeks to work on this together. And, that's, we're, and we are in this together. That's the other good thing. So if you ever start to get weary, know that everybody else in this place is doing the exact same thing. It's got the exact same thing to work on. And furthermore, you've got help from Him. That's the promise. He will feed us as we work our way to the finish line. That's, he will feed us with His very self, His very life. So, let's get to it. notice that every part of our worship, which is what we do here, every part of our worship is designed to help us focus on our discipleship. And so even at this point, something we do over and over again, and maybe even do it mindlessly, the creed, it reminds us of what is central, what is most important. So I invite you to please stand together. Let us remember what is essential. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became a man. For our sake He was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, we are gathered as one to celebrate the good things that we've received from our God. Let us ask Him to prompt in us prayers that are worthy of His hearing. Let's pray for the Church, that the power of Christ's resurrection may give us vision and perspective for our lives, and the courage to live for God each day. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Let's pray for Pope Francis and for all bishops, that the Spirit will inspire them to act boldly with courage and be instruments of healing for all who are suffering. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's pray for all those who have suffered abuse of any kind, but most especially sexual abuse, that God will heal their painful memories, restore their sense of self, and help them to live fully again life. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations and all who hold public office, that God will give them insight into the issues that challenge our society today, free them from self-reliance, and inspire them to work for the common good. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's pray for ourselves and all disciples of Jesus, 
that we may see beyond the false answers of consumerism and prosperity and recognize the true fulfillment of our hungers and desires that can be found only in God. We pray to you, O oh Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for an end to violence and an end to the exploitation of the poor, that God will lift up those who are exploited, guide them to new life and new ways to support themselves and their families. We pray to you, O oh Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all those who are filled with sorrow, that those who have lost loved ones, their health or their employment, may know the presence of God who wipes away all tears and brings light into every darkness. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who are ill, particularly those suffering mentally or emotionally, that God will lift their burden, and that we may be God's instruments, helping to fill their hearts with peace. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And finally, let us pray for all who have died, that they may share fully in the new life of Christ and live with God forever. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May these petitions of your church be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, so that we may receive from your mercy that which we cannot ask in confidence from our own merits. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, that through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands, and will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, and will become a spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to be pleased with us in the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquities, cleanse me of all my sins. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Amen. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant me prayer that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being called now a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, 
to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, an elder and bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, and with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and Glorious Martyrs, Saint Bernadette of Lourdes, Saint Boniface, and with all the saints who please you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Throw him with an O God Almighty, Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who sent your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, our failures to love you and each other, but instead look on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. To love each other. 
a sign of peace in the form of a vowel. So just stay right where you are. I'll come to you. The body of Christ. 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 Show them what I'm The body of Christ. 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 Please be seated.
first grade. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. For the benefit of those who are watching us at home, and I'm grateful that you are, um, I'll lead you in your prayer for communion by desire. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come, at least spiritually, into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And just before the dismissal, I just want to, well, it's been, what, four months now that we've been doing this? Uh, as you probably realize, every organization, but parishes in particular, have been concerned about how they can, you know, keep the lights on and pay the salaries and stuff, stuff like that. So, you folks have been um, very generous. I mean, some parishes, uh, admittedly, some parishes are in, in pretty hot water, pretty deep water. Um, St. Bernadette's is doing okay. We're not, like, we, we don't have a room full of, of cash and change that we go in there and just roll around and, like, you know, Scrooge picked up. But we're paying the bills and things like that, so, I mean, we're doing okay. So I want to thank you. That's because of you and your generosity. Um, back in the beginning of April, I thought about ways that people could do this more easily. And one of the things that I found, and I'm sure you're aware, is this uh, app that you can put on your iPhone, or you can put on your Android machine, or you can even do it on a browser. It's called Tidely. Uh, one of my wishes, to be honest with you, as a pastor, would be that we would see the end of envelopes. I just hate them. Uh, they're a pain. Uh, I know that when I was using them, uh, you know, running around on Sunday morning or Saturday evening, whatever it was, looking for a pen and a checkbook and the chain, whatever. Um, so direct debit came as a solution, so some of you have signed up for that, which is good, it's really good. Uh, two things that this kind of thing does, it helps us budget, it helps us know what to expect. But beyond that, uh, with Tithely, it's even better than direct, uh, direct um, withdrawal. Um, because you control it. I mean, you use this app and you tell it when you want to give, how often you want to give, once a month, every fortnight, great word by the way, fortnight, how often you get to use that word. So every fortnight, or you get to pick the day of the month, you, if you decide what month that you, you, you know, you can't give as much as you usually do, you can change that without calling the office, it's just strictly between you and yourself and, and whatever. And, uh, or if you want to give more, one month, it can happen. So it's entirely in your hands. So I encourage you to take a look at it. Plus, it comes in on your debit card or your credit card. So if you're collecting points, it just becomes part of that. And it shows up on your statement, Parish of St. Bernadette, $1,000 donations, twice, you know, there. So uh, just to let you know, we've been doing this since the beginning of April. And so uh, it, the other thing it does is we can never, we've never been able to do this. It actually shows me stats, general stats, because I don't like looking at particular donations. I don't like doing that at all. I don't want to know. But I, it's good to have stats. So, in, since April 1, just with tithing, so not with the envelopes and not with uh, the direct uh, debit, just with tithing alone, uh, people, 83 people signed up for it. And uh, they either donate, 41% of them are doing it on a recurring basis. Uh, the rest of them are getting, they get a reminder in their phone. You know, don't forget to donate to the church. We've done practically $10,000 just on that, just that alone. 83 people. Um, it even tells me like the average gift size, which, which is kind of interesting because some of you may not know. Some of you may be thinking, well, you know, I've been giving the same thing since 1938. Well, you know, if you want to know, I won't tell you unless you ask me what the average gift size is. I won't tell you that it's $64.26. Oh, slip. Anyway, so just so you know, it, but always, 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 within your means, obviously. Um, but if you want to know more about it, uh, Jasmine is a young person, which means that she knows stuff about computers and phones in particular. 
I'm at the point now where sometimes I'll start to learn something about technology, which is really weird. Remember, I was a software developer, right? So I used to be always, when I get a new piece of technology, the first thing I would do was would be smell it. Mm. Now it's like, I uh, can't be bothered, you know? So but if you want to know more about this, I, myself, me, created this really gorgeous two-sheet thing, which basically ex explains how easy it is to do in two steps. It's so easy. The Jasmine can show you. And on the back are all the you know, reasons why you might want to do it and the ways you can do it. So just go talk to them if you're interested. It's, trust me, it's so easy. I use it. I give that way. And I don't have to worry about anything. I just know what it goes in. And you can also check how much you've donated. There's on the app and you can say, how much have I done? And at the end, you have to send an email out, timely, an automated email when it's time to do your tax receipts. It will automatically send it out. So it's just beautiful. Some things, some things about technology are dehumanizing, but some things just are really helpful. So consider it, or consider direct debit as well. Let's put an end to envelopes. I just, let's please. They're okay. The Lord be with you. Now, mighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, go in peace. Go do some hard work. Glorify the Lord in your lives. Thanks be to God. All right.